priest was appointed to a certain parish and he spoke to the parishioners about his desire to visit the prison and give some help to the prisoners there and he wondered if the parishioners would like to help as well and his ideas were enthusiastically welcomed the parish priest much older and very experienced suggested he rephrase the question differently so the next time he asked how many of you my dear parishioners would like to sign up to participate in prison visiting only three put their hands up in today's gospel Jesus tells the parable of two sons who say one thing but do another the first son was asked by the father to go and work in his vineyard but he answered no later he reconsidered his decision and he decided to go the second son politely said yes to the father but failed to do the work who then actually did what the father wanted Jesus posed that question to the religious leaders of the people of his time he invited them to answer the question and the reply was that it was the first son who really did what his father wanted done at this point of time my dear brothers and sisters we must understand that Jesus was nearing his death for three years he had been preaching to the people inviting them to repent and to believe the good news that he offered them he discovered that it was the public sinners like the tax collectors who responded to his invitation the religious leaders like the Pharisees the scribes even after perceiving the divine origin of the message of Jesus still opposed it rather than believing it they had the same attitude towards John the Baptist knowing that his teaching came from God and as Jesus said to the religious leaders in the gospel today even after you saw it you did not change your minds and believe him religious people my dear brothers and sisters and those who claim to be followers of Jesus sometimes are so intent on proving they are right that they fail to hear the voice of reason and the voice of God we can become so attached to our own wills that we don't hear or follow the will of God and yet whenever we pray the Lord's Prayer we say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven it's not easy to let go of our own wills perhaps it would disturb us a lot to really try and follow God's way God's will for each one of us it might call for some rather big changes in our lifestyle and ways of relating to God and to others as well the parable likens the tax collectors and the prostitutes to the son who first said no but later did as his father had requested and the Pharisees and the elders to the son who enthusiastically said yes but did not go one group has no fine words but they have good deeds the other group has fine words but no corresponding good deeds they represent two kinds of people and the different ways they try to relate to God there are those who have no fine words like those who profess no faith those who do not go to church those who do not pray but sometimes when there is an injustice they will be the first to rise up and to condemn it and to speak out against it when there are people sleeping rough they will be among the first perhaps to donate a blanket or maybe even to do voluntary part-time work supporting and helping and reaching out to the homeless often when there is an appeal to help famine earthquake or even flood victims they will make a contribution 
These people have no fine words to say to God or even about God. But when they do things such as these, they are doing what God has commanded all of us to do. One can imagine the scribes, the Pharisees, how scandalized they would have been at the very thought that public sinners would enter the kingdom of God before them. What of us, my dear brothers and sisters? How would we respond if we were told that murderers who repented and are now living a good Christian life and fully involved in works of charity would get into heaven before people who claim to be Christian? These latter are those who do little beyond going to just church and praying novenas but are not following God's will for them in their daily lives. I'm sure a good number of us will be surprised at who all would have entered heaven even before us. So is there no punishment for the sinner then? We can say that there is indeed. The sinner basically punishes himself or herself. The punishment is built into the very sinfulness. And this is what Ezekiel is saying today in our first reading. Our self-seeking, our hate, anger, aggression, violence, jealousy, resentments, our greed and avarice all lead to isolation, loneliness, hostility with others and often to physical and mental stress and breakdowns. Sin, which is a refusal to respond to God loving us, brings its own inevitable punishment. Our sins often leave wounds which take a long time to heal. God does not need to punish us. We do that very well by the own choices that we make in life. The good news is, my dear brothers and sisters, that God loves to welcome sinners who repent. He never gives up on any of us. He's always calling on us to change if we are sinning and hurting others and ourselves. If we are blessed enough to be good Christians, let us never take this for granted. Any one of us may fall from grace, but God never stops loving or blessing us even then. I pray, Lord Jesus, help us to put your will for us into practice, not only by praying and going to church on Sundays, but in doing whatever you ask of us in our daily lives. God bless and do have a Jesus-filled day.